Welcome back to another episode of the Switch Survival Guide. So today we are going to go over some of the basics for how to survive and uh, how to feed ourselves, because that's going to be really important as we start to slowly starve and dehydrate. So the first priority of this game is to make sure that we live, and uh, you know that can actually be a little bit difficult. So. Let me go over the basic gauges on the right hand side of the screen and uh, that'll give you a little hint as to what we're going to do. So on the top right you can see a little flashing arrow. That is our experience bar and that slowly fills up and when it hits the top it starts flashing and we get this message there is a level up available. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. The next bar down is our weight that shows how much we're carrying and uh, once your weight maxes out you actually can no longer move so you're pretty much stuck where you are and uh, dinosaurs can just come and eat you so be careful you don't get too much weight you can drop objects to uh, reduce your weight now the water gauge is right below that it's that little drop of water and that slowly depletes as you go over time and we need to fill that back up to drink the gauge below that is our food gauge, the little meat thing, and once that drops to zero, we'll start actually taking damage and slowly dying of hunger. And below that is our stamina bar, and you can actually, every time I throw a punch, that bar is slowly decreasing, and once that hits zero, I can barely move and I get really tired. And when I stop moving for a little bit, that'll go back up. Now, if I'm walking normally, it doesn't go down, but if I'm sprinting, that slowly goes down as I sprint too. So you can wear yourself out pretty quickly. Be careful of that. And below that is our health bar. That shows how much health we have, of course. When that hits zero, we die. Try to keep that from hitting zero. It's a big pain when you die. You can respawn, but you leave all of your items on your corpse and you have to go back and get them. So it's kind of a pain. Try not to die. So, um, as we are starting out the game, we're actually able to pick up some of these helpful objects on the ground. So you can see there's a rock, and I'm just going to hit the X button to pick that up. And there's quite a few stones on the beach, and unfortunately we can't pick up the uh, sticks and other stuff, but I will keep grabbing all the rocks that I see. Now, we've got some plants right here, and each plant gets slightly different amounts of items, but if I hit the X button, I'm going to just keep gathering whatever is on this plant. And you can see I'm getting a lot of fiber and a lot of different kinds of berries as I do this. And once again, I'm staying kind of close to the coast because it's a lot safer down here and we're much less likely to die. So our first priority is to get some food and water. Now we spawn on the beach, so water is not a problem. Unlike in real life, you can actually drink the seawater. It's, I guess, fresh water? I don't know. But for some reason, it's totally cool, totally fine. Now I've gathered a bunch of stuff from these plants and I'm going to use the um, A button to open up my menu screen. And this will show my character, all of my stats, and all of the items that I have. Now, we're just going to ignore these items right here. These are actually just uh, vanity items that I got from getting some, experience, uh, some uh, achievements on my other files. So those don't really count, you won't have those. Now, if you look here, I've got these narco berries. Those will actually knock you unconscious if you eat them. So don't eat the narco berries. You want to save these because uh, we will actually use them to keep dinosaurs unconscious while we tame them. And that's going to be really helpful. So we want to collect a lot of these and save them up for when we try to tame a dinosaur. The next item is the stemberry. I don't really use these very much, but you get a tiny bit of food, a little bit of stamina, but um, it'll actually wake you up a little bit if you're starting to go unconscious too. The downside is you get dehydrated. I usually try to ignore those most of the time. Now stones are gonna be used to build a lot of tools and items. So we will save up a bunch of those. And the yellow, blue, and red berries, Amar berries, and tinto berries and azul berries are going to be our main food source when we first start out. They're only really good for food for now. So I am going to click the B button to select these berries and then I'm actually going to move down to this little hot bar and I'm going to drag them down to a spot on the hot bar. 
Now you can use the up, down, right, left on the D-pad is gonna be your defaults. And then these other ones over here that I'm setting this berry into are kind of like your extra action buttons. And you hold down on the top left L button, the uh, left bumper, and then you can actually hit the arrow indicated. So like the yellow berries will be if I hold down the left bumper and then I hit the right on the D-pad, that's actually going to eat one of the berries. You can also eat berries right out of your inventory. So if I wanna eat this berry, and uh, you know, don't do this too often, I will hit the right trigger, and that's gonna use that stem berry. So you can see my health uh, is doing just fine, but my food gauge, the little meat, has just a tiny little tick off the bottom there. And it's kind of hard to see. There you go, you can probably see it better now. So I'm gonna eat some berries, actually a lot of berries. And that should slowly start to increase. Now you can see I've got that little icon that shows a piece of meat there, and that means I'm eating. And next to that is actually the little snowflake that shows that I am slightly cold right now. So we'll go through food a little bit more quickly if we're cold. So I'm gonna keep grabbing and gathering berries and we're picking up lots of other materials, including fiber and all that other stuff. So this will be really helpful to just start by grabbing a bunch of berries and get yourself stocked up to where you can actually have enough food to eat. Now you'll notice that little water droplet is slowly going down also. That means I'm starting to get a tiny bit thirsty. It'll take a while before I start getting really dehydrated, but I'm gonna go ahead and get a drink. So we can come down to the water here and if we get about, you know, ankle deep and you hit the X button, we can actually take a drink and you can see that the water gauge is full again. You can also dive all the way into the water and that will also get you a drink. But, uh, you know, there's sharks in there. Trust me, you don't want to go too deep right now. So we're going to stick here where it's pretty safe and uh, just keep gathering some materials. So now we have all of the stuff that we need to keep us alive. And I'm actually going to uh, take a look at my stats and level up here. So let me get back out where I can see everything that's coming. I always like to keep an eye out for dinos. And I'm going to hit the A button to pull up my menu again. And right here, oh, you know, I forgot to tell you about fiber. That is actually used to make all kinds of stuff. Um, and then these medjo berries are actually edible too. They'll give you a little bit more health and uh, more food gauge than your usual berries, but they're also really good for taming dinosaurs. So I like to save these because you tame dinosaurs much more easily if you feed them medjo berries. So these are my uh, emergency backup food. I try not to eat them if I can possibly avoid it. And you can see here I've got some medjo berry seeds. Uh, don't worry about that for now, but we will save them and we can actually start a farm later on and grow our own. So down here you can see that I have all of these stats and all of these little flashing pluses next to them. That's because I have a level up available and if I want to level up I have to add one to one of my stats. So your health is just the amount of health you have. You can take more damage the more health you have and that's pretty helpful for staying alive. Your stamina controls how how long you can sprint, how long you can attack things, and all kinds of stuff like that. So I think I'm actually going to put a couple of points into stamina at the very beginning because I will be sprinting away from dinosaurs a lot. Now your oxygen controls how long you can hold your breath and how fast you swim underwater, but we're staying out of the water for a long time, so I'm going to ignore that. Your food allows you to get hungry less often, but personally I kind of see that as a waste of points. Water also is just like the food. I usually carry a canteen uh, once I actually leave the beach, so I don't even bother with that one. Your weight will be really helpful later on because it'll allow you to carry more supplies back to your house, but we don't have a house yet. And melee damage actually increases the amount of damage you do to dinosaurs and it increases the amount of stuff that you gather. So I'm actually going to increase that too. 
movement speed allows you to run faster, and uh, that's very helpful. But uh, And then the crafting skill actually allows you to craft slightly better items when you're crafting sometimes. It gives you a little bit better of a chance to get a higher tier item. And Fortitude lets you get hot and cold less easily, so you can go in you know warmer or colder climates, but you can supplement that with clothing. So I'm actually going to give myself another point in melee damage, and there we go. We leveled up twice at once, and now we are level three. And I will actually get into uh, some of these basic tools so you can see how to collect more stuff. So we are already able to make the stone pick, as you can see right here, and a torch. Those are the basic stuff, uh, engrams, that you start out with. But as you can see here, at level 2, we unlock the ability to make campfire, stone hatchet, and spear. And then at level 3, we unlock the ability to make clothes, water skins. So, and then at level 4, we'll actually start being able to build a house. We're just not quite there yet. Now at the very bottom of the screen, you can see it says points available 16. Now each of these engrams or patterns to learn that uh, you can use to make things uh, has a certain point value. So if I want to make a campfire, it costs three points. Stone hatchet, also three. So I'm actually going to hit the B button to select the stone hatchet, and now I know how to make a hatchet. I also want to protect myself, so I'm going to make some spears. So I will click the B button again to make the spears. So now I have the ability to make these. So let's actually start making some tools. I'm going to hit the A button again, which pulls up my inventory. And then at the very top here, you can see it says crafting. I'm going to click on crafting, or I hit the B button, and this shows all the different patterns that we can make. Now, I want to start by making a pickaxe, because that's the very most basic tool. And as you can see, we need 10 thatch, 1 wood, and 1 stone. The first number is how many I have, the second number is how many I need. So I have enough stone already, because we've picked some up from the beach. But I need to collect some thatch and wood now. So to make this easier for me, I'm actually going to select this engram with the B button, and then drag it down to my hotbar. I think I'll put that here under X. And now you can actually see all of the items that we need to make that. So I'm hitting A again to cancel. And if I hold down the left bumper and hit X, it will actually show me what I need to do to get that. And we can actually craft it right from the hotbar also. So let's pick up some wood and thatch. Now, in order to get thatch and wood, I'm actually going to have to punch this tree. So, um, just like in real life, if you punch a tree, it's going to hurt. Trees never start fights, but uh, they never lose fights either. So, I'm just going to give this guy a good whack. And you can see, I'm actually picking up a little bit of thatch. I'm also lowering my stamina, and I'm lowering my health. Now, don't do this for too long, because uh, as I found out my first time playing Ark, I killed myself punching a tree um, about five minutes into the game. Yeah. So if you ever feel like a noob, don't feel too bad. That was how I got my start, was dying from punching a tree too many times. Always good advice. So now, as you can see, if I hold down the left bumper, that little engram is actually lit up for the pick. And if I hold down the button, you can see everything is green because I have enough thatch, wood, and stone. So I'm going to go ahead and click that once, and it's going to go ahead and actually make that pickaxe. Now hitting A again pulls up my menu, and you can see that just popped up in my inventory. I now have a brand new pickaxe. So I'm going to hit B to select it, and then I'll drag it down. And I like putting that in the up button on the D-pad for quick access. Canceling out again, I'm going to hit up button, and that will actually switch my weapon to the pickaxe. So check that out. That is a pretty nice little axe right there, right? Now, swinging it still uses up my uh, stamina. By the way, um, you just poop randomly. There's no bathrooms out here. Sorry about that. Yeah, just, you know, what can I say? I just washed up on a beach. I got no manners. So, now that I've got the pickaxe selected, I'm going to run up to this tree, and I'll just take a whack at it. 
and I'm no longer taking damage because I'm using an actual tool for this. So you can see I'm getting quite a bit of thatch and a little bit of wood as I'm attacking this. That melee damage really helped. I'm getting a lot of it actually. So now we've got some wood and thatch in our inventory and I'm gonna look at my crafting here and the next tool that I want to make is a hatchet. And you can see here I actually need flint to make the hatchet. I have all of the other stuff that I need. So I know I just need one flint and now I'm gonna go find some. So we get flint from attacking a rock with this pickaxe. And these little shiny rocks, the smooth ones are really helpful. That's a dodo by the way, it's not gonna bother me. And uh, that's a parasaur, also not dangerous. It's pretty big, but they do not attack you. So don't stress too much about those guys. They'll leave us alone for the most part. Now, I've got this nice shiny big rock, and these are great to harvest because very rarely you can get a chunk of metal out of them. So I'm gonna hit this a few times. Hey, check it out. We lucked out and got a piece of metal already. Nice, couple pieces of metal. Well, that was really lucky. So, now we've got some flint and some metal, which we'll save for later, and we can actually craft that hatchet. So let me select this here, and instead of bringing it down to our hotbar, I'm just gonna craft it right from this menu. So I will hit the right trigger, and that's gonna start crafting this hatchet. And once that finishes, we'll get a good chunk of experience that way too. I'm gonna check my inventory here, and there we go, we've got a hatchet right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, and I'm gonna set this in the bottom down the D-pad. So now I've got my hatchet out, or my uh, pickaxe, and I can switch it right over to the hatchet by hitting down on the D button. And this is a totally different tool. It does a very similar thing, but if I use the hatchet on a rock, I get mostly stone. Whereas if I use the pickaxe, I get mostly flint. Call me a liar, there it goes. So, and you also get metal if you're using uh, the pickaxe. That's the only way to get metal on those. Also, when you're on uh, chopping down trees, the hatchet will get mostly wood, where the pickaxe will get mostly thatch. So, one last thing we need to make is I wanna be able to defend myself, so let's make ourselves a spear, actually a couple spears. So we've actually got plenty of fiber, plenty of flint, plenty of wood. We got the fiber from collecting those plants, Hey, I just leveled up while I was talking to you. That's cool. But we need some more wood. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this engram down to my hotbar because we will be making more than one spear. And I'm going to pull out the hatchet and chop down some of these trees. It's kind of sad. I just had to chop down my uh, plantain or banana tree in my backyard because the hurricane knocked it over. It was pretty sad. But, you know, we'll see if the stock regrows. So, here we go. We are getting a lot of wood now and not so much thatch. Now, if you look at the right hand side, the little bag icon right below the experience bar is pretty high now, so we're getting kind of high on weight. Be careful that you don't go too overweight. But, uh, we're gonna make some spears, and believe it or not, it's kind of weird, but when you make something out of these items, you'll actually reduce your weight most of the time. So, I'm gonna hold down the hotbar, L bu left bumper, and uh, hit the Y button. I'm sorry, the X button for this it shows up on the hotbar. And that's actually gonna create a spear. And I'm actually gonna create a couple of these because your spears will break as you use them to defend yourself. And it's a really good idea to have quite a few of them. So we're making, uh, as you can see, I've got four of them queued up. If I want to stop crafting them, I hit this little clear queue button and that'll stop crafting them right there. So uh, we've got a bunch of spears. I'm going to click B and then drag it down to my hotbar and we'll set this to right on the D-pad. And there we go. We got ourselves a spear. If I use the right trigger, we can stab with it. If I hold down the right trigger, it'll constantly stab. But once again, we are using up our stamina when we do this. So we can actually go hunting with this later on. Now, if I hold down the left trigger, that's the secondary attack, we can actually throw the spear. But I don't want to throw it, so I'm switching to my pickaxe. So that is the basic tools that you need to survive. 
And uh, in the next episode, we'll actually start using some of them. That's a turtle out there in the background. Don't get too worried. So, so far, only safe dinosaurs. But uh, I'm going to eat a little bit because I'm getting hungry again. And that is pretty much all we need to do for the very basics of survival. So keep working on that. Gather some more materials. Make yourself a f hatchet and, you know, a pickaxe and a bunch of spears. And in the next episode, we'll actually show you how to hunt, get meat, and cook meat. So thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel. We will keep giving you great, helpful guides for how to thrive on ARC on the Switch. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARK Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARK is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There's a tutorial in this series for everything we have done so far in this video. Check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.